everybody. So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 17. Today is September 1st, 2022. We are in September. <laughs> this this year is like we we are in the the last couple of months of 2022. It just went by so fast. Oh my gosh. So um the the main theme for this shot number 17 is really talking about the talking about Kundalini and also talking about the other major uh, energy pathway that comes to our into our body. Um, I've talked about the the prana tube so uh, for a couple of times so the it's it is really the central meridian so the central meridian and and the and Kundalini so those two are the two, um, most major pathways that comes into our body to, uh, and it really impacts a lot of things. So as always, I'm just going to show the, um, hang on, I'm just going to show the, uh, let's see, the agenda so that we can take a look at what to expect. So this is a welcome section and then the presence meditation. Then we'll talk about Kundalini. We'll talk about each, each um, point. So Kundalini is really about chakras. And, and, and then central meridians has a cor or corresponding energy centers as well. So just want to talk about the, the difference between those two. And then also how those two relate to each other. So that will be the the, the major um, part of what it is that we are going to do today, and on this in this play shop. So then uh, I'm going to open up the floor for any questions, comments about Kundalini or about anything that we have talked about in previous play shops. Everything is crystal clear. Okay, great. In that case, uh, let's just go into the presence meditation. So let's all just get comfortable if you're not already. So just uh, make sure you are sitting in a comfortable, comfortable position and then just take a deep breath in to breathe in slowly through your nose. And then let it all go slowly as well. Also breathe out through your nose as well. And then breathe in again. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath. So take as long as it is still comfortable for you to breathe in slowly, fully inflate your lungs and your diaphragm. Just allow your whole body to inflate until you cannot breathe in anymore, then slowly breathe out until there's no more air left in your body. Then breathe in again. So follow that rhythm for yourself. And as you breathing in and out slowly, you are allowing your body to start to become more relaxed. And as you're breathing in, also have the intention that you want to call back all of your attention. 
during the day we send our attention out to the people around us, to the environment around us. And now let's just call back all of our attention so that all of our energy is now back inside us. So focus on yourself. Be extremely selfish in this moment. Call back all of your attention and just focus within yourself. And breathe as you slowly breathe in and out and allow all of your own focus, attention, and energy to come back to yourself. Do this until you actually feel more solid within yourself. Until you really feel comfortable and all here to support and be with yourself. Call back your soul, call back all of your attention, and also set the intention that you want to connect with the highest vibration version of you that you have access to beyond space-time in this moment. You want to be connect with that highest version of yourself that you have access to in this moment. And just feel that you, from the top of your head all the way through within your body, you can just feel this energy that is go going in and out and going through yourself, that you actually can feel that column of energy that runs all throughout your body and even extend beyond your body. When you become aware of that column of energy, then come all the way back all the way back into the room and open your eyes if you have closed your eyes. So just bring all of your attention up now. So welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And let's go on to look at Kundalini. Interesting about Kundalini. So what is Kundalini? Kundalini is energy from the body. So meaning that this energy pathway is about energy that is from uh, the organs within our body. And also from EC. EC is really the central meridian. So energy centers. So, so so short for energy centers. So it is the central meridian and also from earth. It is how the energy is interacting. The energy from central meridian is interacting with the body and the body has a certain energy and also from earth as well. Energies from earth. Because we each one have a a frequency that is innate to us, innate to our soul. Each one has a unique soul signature, which is a, a, a vibration. And when we are in our body, uh, we don't have exactly the same frequency as our soul signature because our body is more dense. So as we come into our body, as we really 
really um, inhabit our body, then the, the, we still have a, a unique frequency though, only it is, it is really a, um, it resonates with our unique soul signature. So it's a more step down version, but it is still resonates with that. So that is what I mean by energy from the body and also from the um, central meridian, which um, I will talk about a little later on. And also from earth itself. Earth itself, earth is an entity, just like our soul, it is an entity, but it is a entity that is um, different from our, our soul. It, the, the, the role of the earth is really to be a playground for souls to come in and um, partner with the entity that is called earth. So earth itself has a frequency, a unique frequency as well. And so that makes part of the Kundalini. And right now, because of the, the tilt of the earth, um, the kundalini is kind of almost inside our spine. So what do I mean by that? Let me actually just show you a picture. So a picture is worth a thousand words. So the, not the red, not the red dots. The red dots is really the, the, the central meridians, but the, these white dots here is really our kundalini. So each point of the chakra system, so chakra one is here, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all of that um, is mixed part of the, the kundalini. So that's that each kundalini goes through this pathway. And the, because of the um, tilt of the earth, it actually draws the energy of the, the, the chakra system, the chakra centers to be actually more closer to our spine. So that is where um, the, the, our chakras are. And also the Kundalini spins clockwise. So, which means that if you look at it from the, the, from the top of your head, it actually goes from right. Oh, actually, yeah. So it's, it spins clockwise. So, so clockwise. So if this is the face of the uh, clock, then it goes this way, it goes kind of spins to the right, from right to left. Whereas the central meridian is anti-clockwise. So that is the difference. We, that is really um, what Kundalini, in a very uh, high level, that's what the Kundalini. And Kundalini is really how we experience life on earth. That's my understanding of what Kundalini is, how we explain, how we experience life on earth. So now let's actually take a look at each and every one of our chakra. So remember this, this um, other picture that I showed you? So this is really the first chakra. So let's look at the first chakra. So perineum, that's the root chakra, also called the root chakra. So perineum, the perineum is about one and a quarter um, cm in front of our anus. So that's where the perineum is. And it is slightly within our body. So it's not, it's not um, exposed like the, the anus is, it's slightly within. 
So that's where the perineum is. That's the base chakra. So what is the base chakra? What is the function of the base chakra? It is really where earth energy comes into our body. And it is a part of our reproduction system as well. And besides the perineum, um, earth energy also comes in through the, there are two, they, they are kind of two meridian points that is at the back of our knee, one on each side, uh, one on the left knee and one on the back side of the right knee, and also one on the left sole of the, our foot one on the, the right side as well. So the perineum plus the two back of our knees and then also the two soles of our feet. So that's where the energy of earth comes in. So when I mention energy of earth, I'm talking about 0 0.01 energy. So that's where the first chakra, the root chakra is. So now um, it's not really about me telling you what, where the, the, the chakra is. I actually want you to feel it. So this is, this is really more of a, a play shop rather than just me talking shop. So let's, let's just, so you know where your anus is, right? So it's about one and a quarter cm in front. So that's where physically the perineum is. So I want you all to start to breathe in and imagine that you are bringing in energy from earth. And um, the main point of chakra is that when you are bringing energy in, that your feet, both feet, left and right feet has to be on the ground because we are talking about bringing in earth energy. So if you have your, if you're sitting um, in a lotus position, your feet is not on the ground. You can still bring up some energy. However, it will be much less than if you have both feet on the ground. So when you are doing this, make sure that you are having both feet on the ground so that your, the, the two um, energy points that is at the, the soles of your feet, one on the right side, one on the left side, that it actually can bring up energy from the earth as well. Okay, so just breathe in and bring in energy through the first chakra, root chakra. So let's do that, just breathe in. And really allow yourself to experience that. Experience bringing in, a, in energy from earth through the root chakra. And sit, right. adjust how you sit. Make sure that you are sitting in a way that really allow energy to come in. And actually, if you are having trouble feeling the energy coming in from the root chakra, is the best thing is really to stand up. Okay, when you stand up, when you stand up, <laughs> I actually disappear when I stand up. <laughs> okay, so stand up is actually easier with to, for you to feel energy coming in. <clears throat> through your perineum. Okay. So just breathe here for a few minutes. Let me just actually adjust the um, angle of my camera so that you guys can actually see me. I suggest all of you, if you can, or if you wish to, 
is to really stand up to feel that, allow yourself to feel. So stand about um, shoulder width your feet, shoulder width apart so that you are supported and just breathe in. Relax your lower body. And really breathe in and out and feel energy coming in through your root chakra. For myself, I, it actually took me a while to really be able to feel that because I sit too much. And that sitting is really not um, very conducive to being able to feel that energy coming in through the root chakra. So it's actually much better to stand up and relax your lower body as much as possible and simply breathe in and out and really feel where the, the root chakra is. And um, everybody can feel your root chakra. Is there anybody who cannot? So far so good, I have not. I feel good. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Yep. Right. yep, all good. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. That's the root chakra. So let's continue. Um, I want you to you guys to feel it because it's um after we do the chakra, we actually will do the, the central meridian. And they are in different location because the, the central meridian one, the, the, the first one, the first um, energy point, the EC one, is actually different from the, the first, the root chakra. So when you can feel the difference within your body, and then you will actually be able to um, work with them much better. So let's go on to take a look at the second one. The second one is of course the um, sacral chakra, which is, hang on, I just want to share screen now. Okay, so let's go up. So it is GV1, which is the tip of the cossacks. So it's the tip of the tailbone. So if you touch your tailbone, you would know that just right below that, there is something there. There is just just below the tip of the cossacks, uh, below the tip of your tailbone, that is where that's GV1 is really the governor, uh, governing vessel one, the first point. So it is roughly the tip of your tailbone. It's just, just underneath it, but that's roughly where it is. Okay, and its function is really for reproduction, the reproductive system, and also elimination system as well. So it's what you um, like. You let go of what your body does not need anymore, and also where all your reproductive um, organs are. Well, most of it, anyways. <laughs> So, Winnie, yes. My reproductive organs have turned to dust. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> it may feel like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so this this is basically where, like, the second chakra is. 
So around here, base of the, the spine or a tip of the, the tailbone. Okay, so let's actually um, continue to, let's, let's just go back to feeling it. So you know, staying things, then shoulder width apart with feet, both feet on the ground. And then now breathe in and this time, really feel really feel energy coming in from the root and then going up to a second chakra feel it going up it will go can I ask question? Yeah. Sure. Yes. So our first chakra very is perineum, right? Yeah. And the second chakra behind, not I always thought that it's like forefinger underneath of the belly button. It's not the second chakra. It's somewhere on the back. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's that's the kundalini. That's where that is. Where is Kundalini? In front or behind? The Kundalini now is actually um, closer to our spine. So it is at the back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So it is at the back. It is. So yeah, um, feel it yourself. Feel where it is. So when you breathe in and you just specifically want to notice where your second chakra is in your Kundalini. Feel that energy there coming in and you will feel that it is, it is indeed at the back. So just give yourself a little bit of time to just breathe in to that, to the second center, to the second chakra. And you would feel that it is actually towards the back. Everybody feel that or? Yep, okay, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, great. So that is the second chakra. So now let's go and take a look at the third one, third chakra. Okay, so where is it? It is two inches above your belly button and it is at the back. So close to where your spine is. two inches above your belly button. So that's where it is physically positioned. And what is the function? It is really to, it is really to supply energy to the digestive system, to provide energy and also to feed the autonomous nervous system as well. That's what AMS stands for, the autonom autonomous nervous system and a lot of that is in our digest um, in our stomach area which is close to where the the third chakra is so let's now again just stand up and breathe into the third chakra so draw energy from the root, let it go to the second chakra. And then just feel it. I just want to note that if you are 
particularly full or if there's something going on with your stomach, and it may take a little bit longer for you to really feel this energy, this, this chakra. So if you have just eaten, then just be more patient with yourself. Just keep on breathing in into the third chakra. And eventually you would notice that there is an energy center there. So any problem with this, feeling this? Okay, great, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, now let's go and take a look at the fourth chakra. Number four. Number four is really um, where our heart chakra is. And it is between your nipples, but it is towards the back. So closer to your spine. So it's kind of, um, it's not exactly where your physical heart is, because your physical heart is a little bit to the left. So it is more between the nipples, towards the back. That's where the heart chakra is. And the function. Of course, the major organ is the heart. And it is the function is to regulate blood circulation and also for immune system as well. So our heart is very important. But we all know that already, right? <laughs> okay, so let's just keep on feeling the heart chakra. So as we breathe in with both feet standing on the ground, we, when we pull in energy, we feel our kundalini pull in energy from the, from the earth. We feel the energy coming in through first chakra, going to the second, third, and then feel it also going into the fourth. Everybody's good. You can feel where your heart is. Okay, great. Wonderful. Let's keep on going. Now we are going to the fifth chakra. Fifth chakra, it is where T1 is. T1 is the thoracic bone, T1. So if you, so at the back of your neck, back of your neck, there is one particular bone that kind of a slight protruding out. So between where your neck and your, sh your shoulder meets at the back, you would feel that there is this one bone that sticks, just sticks out slightly. That's the T1. So that's where it is locationally. This one? Uh, no, at the back. Yeah, the back. This one? Uh, hang on, let me just take a look. This one? This one? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that one at the back. You, you will feel it. Once you put your hand there, you just... Exactly. This, right? Yeah, you will feel that it is slight. There is a slight bump. And that's, yeah. that's the thoracic one. It's actually a big bump. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what is the function of that? The function is really nerves. Nerves at the neck, also thyroid. It controls how our voice is. It is we really where we the air uh, goes through our air pipe. So it's pretty important. Pretty important chakras, energy center. So let's 
um, intentionally feel that. Feel the energy going through there. So keep on breathing in with your heart, uh, with your feet on, on the ground and just from the root, going to second chakra, third one, fourth one, and then all the way up. Just feel the energy going there. This one should be fairly easy because um, there's a lot of nerves there, so you're more sensitive there. Is that correct? Well, you have to relax your shoulders, otherwise you're cutting off your own circulation. <laughs> okay. So everybody can feel that? Okay, wonderful. Great. So now let's go to our six chakra. So the six is really where the third eye is. So that's so locationally, it's between eyebrows. So this one is instead of, it's not at the back. This one is actually, it is in, in the front. So you can see this is, this is the fifth one and the sixth chakra, the third eye chakra is actually towards the front. So right between your eyebrows, just slightly inside the, the skull of your head, you will feel that. That's where the sixth chakra is. And the sixth chakra is really, part of it is, um, it's, it's the third eye, of course. It, it is really about communication as well, but it is communicating with the outside world in a, um, visual way. The, the fifth chakra is about speaking. So, so speaking is really verbal communication. But the sixth chakra is about visual communication. More about visual communication with the outside world. And it's a little bit um, connected to the seventh chakra as well. So let's just um, feel the sixth chakra. So that's you. So now just highlight the sixth chakra. It's right between your eyebrows. Feel that when you are breathing in and bringing energy in through your Kundalini, feel that there is kind of a um, bit of energy or a little bit of pressure right between your eyebrows as you breathe and bring energy into the sixth chakra. I can I can feel this one a little bit easier if I constrict my my throat when I breathe in. I tend to feel this one easier. What what do you mean by can you say that again? Sorry, Charlotte. Yeah, what did you do? Like when I when I constrict my throat when I breathe in. I'm like a lion's breath sort of when I breathe I'm in. Sure. I I can feel this one better. So meaning meaning um, that you actually uh, arch you arch your uh, your throat right? I guess <laughs> I can I constrict it a bit so that the air is a little bit tougher to get through, and then I I tend to feel this one better. Oh okay yeah okay yes I see what you mean. Is that constricting the throat? 
at the throat. Yes. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a yoga breathing. I forget what it's called, but a yoga breathing where you kind of constrict your throat a bit. And it makes kind of a dragon, like a dark Vader sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the ocean breath. Uh, yeah. Ocean breath, yeah. yeah. Ocean breath, yes. So uh, <laughs> it's really arching your, your um, throat a little bit. That kind of breath. That's Darth Vader breath. Arching backwards, you mean? Arch the neck backward? No, the, the throat, no. not the neck, the throat. So forward then? Um, you know? Oh, pull, so, oh, pulling the throat back. Okay, the throat muscles yeah. back. Okay, okay, oh, I got it now. You got it, okay, great. Okay, so everybody feel this, I, I assume. <laughs> I take it. Okay, so now let's go take a look at the seventh chakra. Seventh chakra is really the crown. The location is the crown. So where is the crown? Let me. Um, so the crown. If you if you touch your, the top of your skull towards the back is usually slightly towards the back. It's where all the 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 bones in your head actually come together, you would see that there is a point where it's slightly flat. So it's not right on top, but it's slightly, if you slide your hand to towards the back slightly, maybe about, um, yeah, like an inch or, or inch and a half to go towards the back, you would feel that there is a flat surface where all your the bones of your skull meets together. That's where the crown is. So it's kind of um, at the tip of your, if you trace the tip of your um, ears from both sides and you will meet right around where the crown is. So that's, that's where the crown is. So that's the location of the seventh chakra. And the seventh chakra is, is really, um, the main control. So, so the brain, all the different parts of your brain, that's, it, that's where it supplies energy to that part of your body. So let's actually, so probably you already feel your, your crown tingling already if, if you've been really doing this Kundalini breath. So just bring the energy in, breathe in. You will feel that, that part of your energy coming in. So, so far so good. Anybody have any trouble with it? Oh, no question means no trouble. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's now move on to talking about the central meridian. Central meridian. So the central meridian. Energy from source, especially Milky Way, and also from Earth as well. And it spins anti-clockwise, and it is really the controller of our consciousness. So why do I say that? Actually, let's let's take a look at it visually. There's a picture here. So the this is where the red dots are. That is our central meridian. Central meridian. So it is really in the center. And there's, there are actually eight, well, there's pro, there's, there are more, but um, we on, we're only going to talk about the eight most relevant energy centers. So the eighth one, whereas for Kundalini, there are seven. 
but for the central meridian, there are eight. Why? Because it is drawing in energy from the universe, from source. So the eighth one is really where the, um, the our, our human energy and the energy of the universe is the gateway. So that's why there is one extra one. So this spatially, this is where the um, central meridian is. That's why it's called central meridian because it is really in the kind of in the middle of our body. And it brings in energy from source. It controls our consciousness. It's because we we are really the, um, the sum total of the energy that we can bring in. Like we think that, oh, we can, we can become enlightened easily. But no, we, it's actually not easy to become enlightened. Um, how, come, how come humanity has been so how should I say, um, been so dumbed down, it's because the energy of the earth and also the energy that we can bring in from the universe has been constricted. The, the earth itself, the energy, um, earth itself has not been in higher um, frequency or, or higher Oh, okay, let me, let me put it this way. Um, Earth's own consciousness has been mostly based in um, like third dimension, even though it does have the capability to, for, um, to support all the other dimensions as well. However, itself, the, the entity, the earth entity itself has been by choice kept in the third um, density. And now that earth, the entity earth itself is in fifth dimension, meaning that it will not be supporting anything lower than the, the fifth dimension. Um, so that's why we, as a um, as as humanity, right now it's much easier for us to raise our consciousness. It's because Earth's own consciousness has changed, and Earth supports mainly supports higher um, dimension consciousness. So that really is, can we grow our consciousness beyond what Earth is? Absolutely. But it's going to be much more difficult. We have to really focus our own intention in order to raise our own consciousness beyond what um, the Earth entity itself is mainly supporting. So that is, so that's why, that's what the central meridian is for, is to actually bring in different energies from the universe, from the Milky Way to facilitate us, to bring in that, those consciousness so that we, if we choose to, whoever it is that choose to, can use that energy through our body and to, create that opportunity for ourselves in order to raise our own awareness, our own consciousness. So that's why I, I say that the central meridian in, is really about, it's really controlling our consciousness. Let me actually get back to talking more about the... Is it... I'm just, I'm just wondering, is it also, it's also, we're, it's also a receiver too. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. The receiver is absolutely yeah. a receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the first point. So this is energy centers. Is really this is this is all about the uh, central meridian. Um, we just call it EC one, so that it is different, so that we can distinguish it from the the Kundalini chakras. So EC one, the difference is that it is four inches below the root chakra. So if you look at the diagram, you would see that it is is actually um not within our body because root chakra is within our body but ec1 is actually four inches below that and and because we uh well our licks kind of is on both sides so it is actually not within our body so ec1 is the gateway to earth gateway to earth energy so earth energy comes in as well. Earth energy comes in through the central meridian, through the EC1. So four inches below root chakra. And what's the function? It actually filters. So it's gateway to earth energy. It filter energies from our environment. So it is how we feel safety and also self-confidence. And if you don't feel very safe and if you feel um, don't feel very confident, then you know that your, your um, EC1 is probably not very big. It's probably we're quite small. So what can we do? So let's just feel. Let's now just go and feel the EC1. So stand shoulder width apart. So again, stand up so that you, because we are bringing in energy from Earth, so we need to have our feet on the ground. So feet on the ground and just this time hold the intention that you want to feel the central meridian, the first point, which is four inches below the root chakra, just intentionally breathe in through this energy center one, and intentionally make it bigger, enlarge it, so. Feel this energy center. It may, take a, it may take a little bit, take a few more breaths, maybe a minute or two to really feel this because we've been, uh, <laughs> we've been through the ringer. I feel root chakra, but not this one. Okay, so, okay, just be patient. Just, just hold that intention you want to feel this energy center is four inches right below the root chakra. Root chakra is where the perineum is. So it is kind of in the, the bottom, but in the middle of our body, um, four inches below that part of the perineum. It's kind of difficult to feel what it's not in your body. No, no. So just relax, relax, just relax. You may not feel it, but you will feel that there is energy when you, when you breathe in, you feel energy through the kind of top of your thighs. You feel energy coming in.
Okay, just be patient. I know um, this is not inside your body, but it is an energy center. It is within your energetic body, not inside your physical body, but still inside your energetic body. So if you relax your lower body, And really set the intention that you want to feel the first center of the central meridian. Actually, I start to feel my inner tight, inner tight activated. Okay. Is it fair? Yep. Yeah, it is. Oh, nice. Thank you. I know you just feel the the um, the like like this um, the inner thigh, yeah, just a little bit, roughly four inches below the perineum. There, you feel that part of your body. You feel a vibration there. You may not. It is. Be patient and just breathe in and set that intention that you want to feel it. And also set the intention that you want to make that energy center bigger. And actually, when you set the or uh, when I set the intention to make that energy center bigger, I actually feel that there's there seems to be um yeah this this seems to be it. I do feel that it is bigger the energy center I can feel that there is a very subtle thickness of energy. So everybody feel that? Anybody have trouble feeling that? Let me know. Yeah, not so not so clear. Not so clear? Okay, so just... No. That's, but some of them aren't clear for me either. <laughs> <laughs> so just actually relax. Most, most important thing is to relax your lower body. Well, relax your whole body, but more important, the lower part of your body. And make sure your feet are, you know, shoulder width apart so that your, your legs are not like touching each other too much. So leave room for that energy center to become thicker. You just set the intention. As you breathe in, you want to bring in more energy through the that energy center one. And just be patient and start to feel and it's it's a very subtle movement of energy within your inner thighs that you would feel by the upper part of your, of your inner thigh.
And if you still can't feel it, so just relax your body, just go side to side, shake out your legs, just relax it, and then go back to standing, shoulder width apart. And make sure that your, your legs are, that your knees are not locked, meaning that you, that can, you can kind of spring up and down easily. You're not like locked so that you can't move your legs and your knees. So just allow your knees to be softly. So that you're, yeah. So soft legs. And just keep breathing in and setting the intention that you want energy center one to become bigger. And as you breathe in and out, just see if you can feel some subtle energy moving in. About four inches below your perineum. Is it better? Everybody can feel a little bit something yet? Yes, I feel on my yeah. inner tight, on the upper inner tight, on both sides. Okay, great. How about Adina? Yeah, I, I feel like I, I had difficulties, but now I start to feel like supported from the earth energy. Okay, good. good. Um, Needs more practice, Winnie. Any more practice, yes. Um, how should I put it? You would feel, there's a feeling like you you have diapers on, but it's a, it's not a solid diaper. It's, it's just a subtle energy that is just wrapped. Mm. Okay. Around. That's that's how I feel. That it. it's like I, I'm, as I breathe in and make this energy center bigger, feels like I'm wearing diapers. But it's a subtle <laughs> energy diaper. <laughs> that's I think that's that's a, my best um, <laughs> description of how I feel. It doesn't mean you have to feel exactly the same as me, but you know that's that's one of the ways that I feel this energy center. You seem experienced in wearing diaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write this down like like wearing a diaper. <laughs> Subtle energy diaper. <laughs> It's you a won't good feel it until you wear a diaper. <laughs> Breathe until you're wearing diapers. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I, I know it may not be easiest because um, we are so used to the Kundalini energy, we are not as aware of the central meridian. So that's why it's, uh, that's why I, I want you to actually experience both so you know what's the difference. There literally actually is an energy tube that's in the middle of your body. And that really is the central meridian. And um, a lot of the times um, a central meridian is not, we're not very aware of it. So that's why um, it's it's about time that we are aware of it because it is, if you want to raise your consciousness, this that this central meridian is, um, is your shortcut or highway to raise your consciousness.
Okay, so I let's move on to the next one. I, I know that may, maybe not everybody can feel so, that too much. It's interesting because for a long time, I thought that it's the same meridians and uh, I mean, energy centers and chakra. I thought it's the same, but it's slightly different, right? Well, one in on the spine and one in the center of the body. Yeah, they, um, Sifu James did mention that at one point or the in the olden days, they, the chakra, the Kundalini and the central meridian are actually much closer together. However, because we, our consciousness is, has shifted so very much. So the, <clears throat> the reason why our Kundalini and the, the, the central meridian are much further apart is because, so the central meridian is really energy coming in from the universe. So energy coming in from the universe is, for lack of a better word, is truth. Is really energy from source. So there's so that for me is the truth. Right now, our our kundalini, which is our energy center, is also um, influenced by our understanding of our reality. Is actually not even close to what the truth truly is. That's why our kundalini and the central meridian are um, further apart. So as we do, um, as we clear our emotions, as we um, really focus on feeling and um, going after what is the truth, not just the truth that we choose to believe, but actually universal truth, truth that is coming in from Right now, we can only see certain things. We are only aware of certain things. When I say see, I mean aware. We are only aware of certain things. There are a lot of things that we can't, we are not aware of yet, but there are actually, the universe has all the information. However, right now, our human body, our human um, perception can only decipher a portion of that truth. That's why our, our um, Kundalini is the way they are. It's because we, we have not been taught how to process truth. We've actually been, um, well, <laughs> the last couple of thousand years, especially, truth has been so much distorted and hidden from us. That's why our energy center or our Kundalini is the way it is. It's actually reflect that why our Kundalini is so far away from the central meridian is because we don't have the truth in our body. So our energy centers cannot it uh, cannot be where the central meridian is. The more we let go of our own emotions, let go of um, our egoic point of view, when we actually return back to this, the, 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 the universal truth, then our own Kundalini and, uh, chakra system would become closer to the central meridian. So that's that really is, explains what the, how come they are different right now. So that's why I say that when we, when we consciously strengthen the central meridian and really um, start to use the central meridian, energy coming in through the central meridian to help us to clear our own chakra system, then we can come closer and closer to universal truth and that's how we raise our consciousness so it's a very long-winded way of answering your so you're going to explain how to use um how to raise consciousness through this um, well let's let's just feel 
the 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 central meridian first. Feel where it is. Okay. Yeah, that's that's actually how we um, what we learned on the weekend with uh, Sivu James. So so let's let's go to the second uh, EC two. So EC two energy center two. Energy center two is between the governing uh, GV1 and CV2. So what are these? Um, CV is short form for conception vessel and governing vessel. So CV2 is really at the, um, in the back. And GV1 is two in, uh, it's, it's really, um, where is that again? GV1. So it is, if you take a look at it, um, let me actually just show this. So that's where it is. So it is. <clears throat> so it is kind of here. Okay. So, and what is the? I'm sorry. What is CV one in GV one? Conception vessel. Yeah. These are meridian points. These are meridian points. So if you don't, if you don't understand it, then don't worry about it too much. Um, okay. <clears throat> but it is, if you know where the the so you so you kind of know where the your womb is, yeah. The what? The womb, the conceptual vessel, is the womb, yeah. But the yeah. Kind, yes. Maybe it's born from. Mm -hmm. That's your womb. Around there, yes. Yeah. And it is in the middle of our body. So it's going through the womb or? Um, I or believe, it... I, I, I don't know my, uh, I'm not sure whether it is actually inside the womb. However, it is very possible. That it is. Or it could be from the front of the womb. I don't know. No, then it wouldn't be central. Yeah. Oh, maybe just slightly behind. Uh, I can't imagine. When we, uh, when we feel it, when we breathe into yeah. it, we will actually yeah. feel it. Yeah, right? that's yeah. So, so what is the function of the uh, energy center too? It's really masculine and feminine energy integration. It's, it's about self-love and it's about self-respect. So, <clears throat> so this is, um, it's not male or female, but it's masculine and feminine. So it's not because this is more spiritual energy. So it's not about Physicality is not whether you're physically a male or, or a female. Everyone has masculine and feminine energies, whether you are women or men. We both have both masculine and feminine energies within our body. So this is where the second um, so energy center is about. It's really the balance between the masculine and feminine. So if you are not balanced yet, then this energy center would be um, really one of those centers that you can start to work with in order to balance yourself in terms of masculine and feminine energy. It's about self-love and self-respect. How much do you love yourself? Truly love and um, want the best for yourself and respect your own journey as well. So that's all about the 
energy center too. So let's now feel it. So <clears throat> not really about knowing where it is, but actually feeling it. So same thing again, stand, feet shoulder width apart and just make sure that even though you're standing, you're not locking your knees so that, you know, your, your feet is flexible. And then you just breathe in and set the intention that you want to feel energy center number two. And you want to make that center bigger. So the way I feel it now is actually I feel there is something, there's energy was pushing against my sacrum. this energy center to yet. Seems like my body temperature increase. I feel something. I don't know exactly if I feel it <laughs> or not. <laughs> Your energy body temperature is increasing. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Yeah, it's because we are we are expanding our energy center. So yes, we do. That's yeah. You can feel the spinning. You can feel the spinning. It's anti-clockwise, so. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to spin? Yeah, it, it is an energy center. And all energy centers spin. So this, this one is anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Okay. So it's from left to right.
Vocês são fácil de ler? Ok. <laughs> Let's press on. Because I think we are a little bit behind. The number three, energy center number three is two inches above the navel, above your belly button, and in the middle of your body. So that's where that is. And this energy center is about power. So willpower, emotions. It is about emotions within yourself and also other people as well. So in your environment as well. So it is sensitive to all the emotions that's around you. That is energy center number three. So let's... Try breathing into this center. So once again, this center. And now this time just this one I feel quite easily actually. I don't know about you guys. Me too. Yeah. You feel it right to me. Yeah. <laughs> He's so good with our emotions. <laughs> Actually, I start to feel EC1. Mm -hmm. There's a pump pamper also, like dump, dump. Diaper, <laughs> 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 huh? Like a diaper, yeah. Okay. Actually, okay. Uh, I imagine it once and now I feel it. Okay, good, good. So, okay, good. In that case, let's press on to energy center number four, which is the heart, of course. Energy center number four, like GV10, CV17, those are just meridian points, just basically, it's yeah um it's it's around the between your nipples but inside your body so in the middle of your body right, so this is where ec4 is right here let's let's now just breathe into that <clears throat> Breathe into that again. Set the intention to make this energy center bigger. It may help if you simply think of something you love. Someone you love, somewhere you love, or something that you love. This one actually can feel the uh, the move the movement. Very strong. Okay, good. I hope you all can feel this energy center. Yep. Great. 
So let's go to, okay, five, no, okay, four, so five, GP14 and T1. So it is really in the middle of our neck. So the bottom of our neck where T1 is. And GP14 is actually, you know, if you, if you, um, so the two in between the two collarbone, there is a, a dip there in the middle of your neck. And you feel that. So it is just in the middle of your neck. That's, that's a communication center. So the function is communication to, and also to create your reality by speaking your truth to the universe. So that is really all the function of energy center number five. So let's feel that. that the intention to enlarge this energy center number five. Okay. So far so good, everybody? Yes, for me, the first and second one was difficult to start to feel, but the rest, mm -hmm. I can Okay. Yeah, it's um, the first and second one because um, you're just starting out. Now that you've been breathing and enlarging each of the energy centers through the, the central meridian. So right now there's actually a lot more energy going through your central meridian, that's why. It, it becomes easier and easier. So now energy center number six, in bet between your eyebrows. So where it is, it's in between your eyebrows, but it's more towards the middle of your head rather than just underneath your, rather than, you know, close to the, your skull in front. Okay, that's where your, the energy center number six is, and this one is about really consciousness. If you are a creative person, like it, it actually <clears throat> um, bring in creativity because you are communicating and bringing in um, thought patterns from outside of you. <clears throat> So it actually activates your own imagination, your own intuition, and also is a, it expand your own awareness and consciousness. And it, it starts to um, strengthen all your psychic senses. So all your six senses, all of that is all the, the, um, the function of energy center number six. So let's feel the center. Let's feel this center. 
Okay, so just singing, just breathe in. This one should be fairly easy by now because we've been doing this. So just feel that energy center towards the, so around eyebrow, between the eyebrow, but towards the center of your head. The way I feel it is that when when I make this energy center bigger, I actually feel like, like there's a big ball that's right underneath the the top of my skull. So that's how I I feel it. You may feel something a little different. So I'm just sharing <clears throat> how I feel this energy center. So let's move on. Energy center number seven. This one is a little different from the first chakra. So it is actually four inches above the top of our head. So it's not within our body. So four inches above. So four inches above. This is around where the energy center number seven is. Within uh, is actually the, and like, like you've heard of the antenna, right? So this is really where our antenna is. Within our head, there is a, um, there's kind of a pyramid. It's not a physical pyramid, but and th there is an energetic pyramid. And the tip of the pyramid is about four inches above our head, which is where the energy center number seven is. And it is really the controller for all the other energy centers. It actually refines the energies coming in from source, from the Milky Way, refines it so that it can work with each individual because not all energies coming in is going to be uh, good for everyone. So this energy center is the one that kind of filters out energies that does not work well with the, the person. And it's, it's specifically only Latin energies that is that will work well with each individual person. So this is what the function of energy center number seven is. So can I ask a question? Yes, of course. If it's universal energy, um, when we did chakra, we started to feel it from the down now. But mm -hmm. if it's universal energy and it's co coming from up, down, why we again started to feel it from uh, EC1? from down up. Why we don't start to feel it from up down because it's coming from up down. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why you should. You should be feeling it from the top of your head first. Mm -hmm. You just that's starting all, down, right? Yeah, we're just doing it um, because we did the Kundalini first. So that's why I'm talking from energy center number one to eight. Mm. But, um, energetically, it is coming down from the top of our head. So which one Kundalini? Kundalini is the first one, right? Kundalini is the first one. Kundalini is the one that um, is close to our spine. It's kind of running close to our spine. The only, the only one that is not close to our spine is actually uh, number six. It is like between our eyebrows, just 
just a little bit inside our scalp. Thank you. Okay, so, so great. Yes, it is the central meridian. It is coming down. So the way I feel it, actually, I feel it from the top of my head first. And the energy kind of filters down. So let's Kundal do that. The Kundalini is CK and the energy from the top is easy. Right. And also it is spiritual, it has no emotion. Yeah, it is more it is spiritual. Whereas the, the function of the chakra uh, has a lot to do with how our um, internal organs are. Okay, so, so when the moving energy in Kundalini, we have to do it from the oars from down up. And this energy center, we have to imagine how it's going from up down, right? Yeah, that's why when we do uh, remember when, when we breathe in, pure love is from top down. We feel right. from the top all the way down to the base of our, our spine. Whereas at 0 0.01 energy is from the spine all the way up to the top of the head. So that's. I see. Thank you. Yeah. So actually, you break now what is 0 0.01, how it's going up, and how pure love going down, right? Yeah. So feel it. Um, let's, let's feel energy center number seven. So just breathe in there. So four inches above your head. So just kind of um, activate, activate your antenna. because it is four inches above, so it may be harder to feel, but you will feel that there is an, a column of energy that's right at the top of the head. So far so good, you can feel that. Feel the top of your, of your head. I do. Okay. Yes, I, I did too. I felt a lot yeah. in my top of my head. Okay, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So last one, last one is number eight. So number eight is eight inches above the top of your head. So it is roughly one head up, eight inches above the top of your head. So that, what is the function of that? It is really the gateway, the gateway to universal energy. It filters energies that's coming in from the source, from Milky Way. So this is really, um, gateway to the universe. So let's just feel it. Let's just feel that. So energy, eight inches above. Just intentionally enlarge that. Energy center number eight, eight inches above.
So how do you feel it? The way I feel it is that when you make this center bigger, you actually feel, you feel it on the top of your head. You feel like there is so much more energy coming in. So it's, it just, it's, it's like, um, when this energy center number eight is is big you feel the energies um, that that prana tube within yourself it is actually bigger that's how i feel it stronger the energy is much stronger and bigger So just relax your the top of your head and just feel. That eight inches above the head, is that the same like we uh, used to call uh, alpha protection, connect and activate? Yeah. That's, it. it's also That's why I feel it because I always, always activate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Great. Well, um, unfortunately, <laughs> tell them about the. No, nothing should be above your head. Your head should not be covered when you. Yeah. Build it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So make sure you, like, if you really want to work with this energy center and make sure that you don't uh, have anything on your the top of your head so don't wear a scarf or don't wear um, a hat because when you wear something you're actually blocking that energy like you won't block it completely but you you kind of limit your own um access to you but if i have for example ponytail or pins no, no, that's, that's but, okay. That's at the back of your head, though, not at the top. No, I, I did have pin right here on the side. On is the side, but not at the top, though. And we talked yeah, about the, on top. the top where the energy is coming in. Yeah, okay. that's where the energy is coming in. So, yes. But don't wear a hat. That's why it's better when you do it outside. It's really high. You can go really high. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So this is this is really all I want to talk about this time. Um, doing the um, play shop number seventeen is just to introduce, and this is really the the introduction because um, there is so much more that we can do with these energy centers, and we can actually in, in next time we can actually make we can intentionally intentionally have those two energy pathways come together. Okay, we can actually merge those two intentionally. I love so that, thank when you. We, when we do that, it actually, um, it, it, it helps you to, to grow. So that will be next time. But this time I just want everyone to feel the difference between those two energy pathways and where they are. And also um, like between now and next week, feel free to play with the central meridian and also play with the Kundalini, play with those two energy pathways. Really um, enlarge them, enlarge them so that you can feel them because there actually is so much more we can do. Uh, I, I believe, um, Roxana actually sent out that uh, if you if you combine if you merge uh, a, 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 the the energy center number seven and energy center number one and also uh, chakra number seven, you, you feel more confident. 
because you have both the, the earth energy and also the, the universal energy coming in in the balanced way. So the, how you combine and use these energy centers actually changes how you feel and how you interact with your environment. So that's all to come later. Actually, she gave me that before my job interview. Yeah. And I didn't know what is it. I mean, I didn't quite understand, but I just, you know, pronounce it before the interview. I didn't feel worry. I feel so confident. I didn't feel worry, nothing. So right. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, so you may not know, like you may not consciously know, but your unconscious mind already know. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me this evening. Um, unfortunately, you don't have time for a meditation because it is a little bit after 10. I don't want to keep you guys too late. So, however, I think we, we kind of like did, did a meditation because just feeling, this feeling all these energy center is the meditation already. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank